Hello friends and family and welcome back to the Global Pandemic Crippling Anxiety Meditation Hour. I think that's its official name now. Um, I want to revisit uh, a question um, which was asked, which I, I think has a, a lot of potential answers, um, which is why meditate? Um, and before I do that, I'll go over the ground rules as, rules as usual um, for anyone who doesn't know me. I'm not a meditation instructor. Um, this is not meditation instruction. This is just a discussion between friends and family um, about meditation, the practice of meditation. And <clears throat> the, this question of of why meditate is um, it's it's very broadly applicable it will still come up in your mind even after thousands of hours of meditation it is essentially uh, a version of the the kind of skepticism I was arguing for earlier it also comes across um, as doubt and um, doubt if you differentiate it from skepticism can be uh, helpful at times but um, it, it's only helpful insofar as you're applying it practically um, so you need to doubt your own experience if you're doubting something that you haven't tried or that you haven't started um, the, it just becomes uh, a question of hypotheticals um, and I don't think that that's very helpful. So I, I thought I would um, approach the question of why meditate from uh, a contemporary standpoint. If right now we are all or most of us trapped at home or um, if we happen to be homeless and fortunate, we're in someone else's home. <laughs> um, while we're trapped at home, it, it is very likely that whatever negative emotional states we're experiencing, we are almost certainly not keeping to ourselves. We're sharing plenty of our own negativity with um, the loved ones that we share a home with. And um, this can cause a sort of spiral, um, at least in my experience. So if I'm feeling negativity, then I express the negativity and then the other person gets defensive and then they're feeling negative, and then they express their negativity. And it doesn't take long before we find that we're stuck in a world of short fuses. It doesn't need to be anger necessarily, but um, all sorts of sadness and hurt and upset feelings, um, frustrations, misunderstandings um, can come up within the household at a time like this. It doesn't, it certainly doesn't help at all that the news and social media, traditional media are um, presenting us with, with very little to be immediately happy about. Um, but even within the confines of our own home, whatever is going on in our minds doesn't have a lot of opportunity um, to escape in other avenues. We can't go to the gym. We very likely cannot even go for a run depending on where we are. We can't go to a park perhaps and get away from other people. Um, we are probably feeling to various degrees trapped wherever we are, um, even if we're quite comfortable where we are, and I think most of us are. Um, 
And I, I think that this became uh, acutely apparent to us um, while we were traveling here to Jammu. Uh, as we crossed the border, we had to stay in a hotel room. And we both thought that we were well equipped to deal with the psychological difficulties of essentially being in not solitary, binary <laughs> confinement um, with no fresh air and no way to leave the room um, for, for days, but I mean, not indefinitely. And it, it turned out to be much more of a struggle than we would have guessed. And I think that in times like this, your house begins to feel close. <laughs> the walls close in and it feels like you're stuck a little bit. And even if you weren't a particularly social person before, um, you are probably not enjoying fresh air and even very casual social interaction the way that you would have prior to um, the outbreak and the lockdowns. And in that respect, it is sometimes very helpful to spend time alone. And that can't necessarily always be easy um, in our current circumstances. And I would say that in some ways, um, sitting down for 10 minutes of Anapana meditation can't be that time alone. And you'll find that you're never really alone. You're always um, swimming in a sea of your own thoughts and emotions. But um, at least in those 10 minutes, you will know that whatever it is that's bothering you, whatever it is that is um, moving your emotions in one way or the other, moving your thoughts in one way or the other, um, that that's entirely within you. It's a memory, it's an imagination, but it's your own. There's, there's nobody there during your meditation period to bother you to, uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully um, your family will give you 10 minutes alone to meditate. Um, and so I, I think that that is uh, one good reason um, generally and at a time like this uh, to try to find 10 minutes a day um, in the morning and in the evening um, just to, to be alone and to perform this small exercise. Um, you can do it with other people in the room, certainly. Um, that's what these videos are intended to replace. <laughs> um, uh, but um, you are really alone in those situations. You're alone with your thoughts, you're alone with your emotions and this, this activity of bringing your attention back. Um, and so with that in mind, let's spend 10 minutes alone together. I have my timer here, it's set for 10 minutes. And uh, if you want to start your own timer, that's probably a good idea as well. And I'll start it now.
that's our timer for today. Thanks for meditating with me, and we will see you tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Stay healthy. Goodbye.